But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hello, gifted podcast listeners. You are stronger and ready to finish the year well. Amen. Let's get into the word with Pastor Kwame. This is your girl, Steph. Blessed Christmas to you and your family. Preach the word, man of God. Praise and honor belongs to the Lord. Amen. God bless all of you, and I believe that his banner over us is love. Amen. Uh, Something interesting happened. Some of you just recognized it. I actually posted Monday's podcast on Saturday for some interesting reason, and I also got kind of preoccupied a little bit with a a, a taping for a crossover service for my friend in South Africa. So, I was kind of in that zone for the past few days, uh, recording the taping and also setting up Gifted TV. So things were a little bit um, out of control. But we want to get, come back on schedule and continue to um, get going with what I hope for it not to be just a teaching, but a provoking into practice. My goal is that I want to nudge you and push you so you start prophesying, push you so you start flowing the word of knowledge. I want you to have those gifts activated within you so you can survive the days that are ahead. Because that is the only way you, your future is guaranteed. I can promise you that 2021 is going to be smooth. But this I can promise you, if you hear from God, your 2021 will be smooth. I can't promise you that things are going to be better in 2021. But this is what I can promise you. If you can only hear from God, your 2021 will be better. Amen. That's why I'm so much passionate about pushing you to flow in the gifts of the Spirit. So that you will be able to have something to fall on. You you need to know that I know how to wait on God and hear his voice when I need to. Because that is the only guarantee that your future is secured. Because they that are led by the Spirit of God, the same are called the sons of God. Amen. And so I'm passionate about this so much and I want you to uh, help me help you. Let's get this going. Until you can hear a phrase, until you can see a picture and you can identify this did not come from my head. This did not come from my own mind. I bet I sense is probably from the Holy Spirit. Now, it's so interesting because the workings of the Holy Spirit, it's not easy to identify. The Holy Spirit can tell you something and you wouldn't know it was the Holy Spirit that told you. The Bible says when Simon Peter heard in his mind, heart, that Jesus is actually the Messiah, Jesus said that flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Jesus had to tell Simon where he got it from. Simon did not know he got it from the Holy Spirit. And that's kind of what this training, this teaching is supposed to do, to help you know that this thought I just had, it has to be God. And so that you put all your weight on it and you pursue that thought. And you can come and say that this idea that is happening to me in my dream, it has to be God. Amen. Because not everything that comes from your inside is God. But I'm training you to know that which is God and that which is not. Amen. All right. So let's do the second part of prophecy. And then we are going to continue into the 31st. I will have a special word. I did a taping and I believe that it's good that I share that with you. So it's a big message about 18 minutes. So on the 31st, I'm going to either send a link to the page for those of you that can listen in. It's a crossover message, which I believe is timely for all of us to hear. Amen. Um, so let me read a verse, which is a very familiar verse that we have been looking at for the past um, two podcasts. So it says in the book of First uh, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, it says now, and another, the ability to prophesy and another, the ability to prophesy. And I made a clear um, definition that prophecy is hearing from the Holy Spirit and verbalizing it. Prophecy 
hearing from the Holy Spirit and saying it. So I told you that the first set of gifts we talked about are, were informational. What the Holy Spirit will tell you about a situation, about a problem, about a person. And the same is also about the root cause of a thing. Those are all informational. The next set of gifts that the Holy Spirit brings to us are gifts that we are supposed to open our mouth and declare it and speak it and profess it and those gift things are what we are looking at and the first one is prophecy prophecy is hearing from the holy spirit and verbalizing it and the holy spirit gave us the, more like a template which is when i speak i intend to to um when i speak i intend to edify i de- i intend to encourage and that is kind of the spirit which with prophecy flows. Amen. Edify, encourage, and to also build up and to come alongside and kind of help. So that is kind of the Holy Spirit's intent on doing that. Amen. So I'm going to touch a little bit on um a little bit on the side of do's and don'ts or uh, what not to do. Uh, we're going to go through a few of that, and then we, I'm going to kind of end up by helping you to prophesy for the first time for those of you who have never prophesied before i'm going to kind of show you more like the steps if you're going to prophesy this and that is what you have to get in place and then ready and go and you start prophesying all right and i talked a little bit about the office of the prophet is a little different from the gift of prophecy and so the office of the prophet is a little bit um an official uh calling upon a person to work in a particular uh, office and to train prophets and also to bring judgment or correction or other things that the lord will speak but for a day-to-day believers edification it is given to all of us to begin to prophesy and i believe that um when you prophesy you, you get to know the mind of god concerning a matter amen all right so let's um let's begin from some of the things that i wanted you to pay attention to the lord does not want anybody to take ownership of anybody's life god wants everybody to be responsible and responsibility is not a burden responsibility is a right that is why witchcraft means somebody taking over your responsibility witchcraft means when somebody wants to do something so at the end of the day they are the people that are controlling your choices that is witchcraft that is why it's a little bit witchcraft when you don't have responsibility of your action and you are calling another person to tell you what God is saying it uh, it categorizes itself as witchcraft because witchcraft is when your will is in somebody's control the Bible says that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet which means that even the Holy Spirit will not override your spirit to say anything. You understand that? So it's very critical that you begin to understand that this I'm about to mention, I think I touched a little bit on that. It's important for you to notice, all right? So never use prophecy as fortune telling and don't use it to rebuke people. You understand? So I guess for some of us who have never prophesied before, it will never happen to you. You understand? People who use prophecy to rebuke people and all of that, there are people that already operate in the prophecy, already operate in prophecy, and they are so familiar with it to a point that they can abuse it. It's it's always um, people who are new to things never abuse it. It's people who are old, who are used to things that abuse it. That's why most of the time, your friends who abuse you are friends that have known you for a long time. So when I say don't use it to manipulate people, I'm talking about those who are already able to prophesy, all right? But it's not for that. You can't use it to also correct leadership. You understand? You can't stand in the church and say, that says the living God, um, the pastor is, has committed fornication and the Holy Spirit has left him. That is, that is trash. You can't do that. The reason is because the Lord said order, amen? And the reason you cannot do all of that is that every prophecy must be judged. You understand that? So you have to come from a humble place, I keep saying. Because all you had was a thought. All you had was a flash. All you had. So because of that, we know in part, therefore we prophesy in part. 
all you saw from the Holy Spirit was uh, maybe just one word. And so you have to humble yourself and speak it out. Sometimes the more you speak, God makes it clear. But when you are kind of, uh, um, when you are prompted by the Holy Spirit to speak it, you have to speak from that humbling place. Be bold though, but be humble about it. If you start by saying, the Lord has spoken and it is settled, that's it. You are preaching, you are making what you are saying something nobody can judge, which is not a proper way of operating in prophecy. All right, so it says now, you have to understand that you can use it to kind of manipulate and try to correct people. And you can bring um, your old ideas through prophecy. I talked about it the other time. And to you can give uh, direction to business dealings. You understand? Those are the things. That's why God intentionally made every prophet fail their presidential elections prophecy is not for that you don't understand prophecy is not for presidential elections it's not for who is going to be married that is not what prophecy is for everything that must happen god wants you to be fully responsible amen it's to edify and to encourage and to build us up it's not for what will happen tomorrow is not for who you marry. It's not should I buy the stocks. That is that is not for that. God wants you to, when it comes to those things, God wants you to seek wisdom. God wants you to have knowledge. God wants you to learn. God wants you to ask questions. If somebody is looking at you and what you are trying to date somebody, you don't say, what is a prophetic word? No. What? How many children does he have? Is he married before? That is what you ask. You don't go ask the Holy Ghost. Is that the one I should marry? Do do if it, do the due diligence and get the facts on the ground. That is being responsible. The Holy Spirit is not coming to take away your responsibility. He's coming to help you and whisper sprint into your life. So take all of that thing away quickly. That is going to get you into something very crazy. So don't use prophecy for business deals. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be tempted to do that. I'm not saying God cannot speak. When God speaks, hey, God has spoken. But I want you to be cautious that it is not, that's not the purpose of it. Also, don't use um, prophecy for f- uh, like relationship issue. And then use prophecy. Uh, I talked about it. I want to emphasize this again. Don't use prophecy for your personal compassion and i keep emphasizing it we all want the best for people but don't say what god has not prompted you amen don't say what god has not prompted you amen when job was sick a lot of people made mistake by saying things god has not said and god punished all of them amen so i want you to be careful be careful and don't be more nice than God if you have not heard anything you've not heard it sometimes you walk to a person and God says "Um, I am doing something that I'm the only one that understands that you have to respect God's wisdom in his plans all right so that is what you don't do and the things you do when it comes to prophecy is that you speak forth clearly and boldly Amen. So, example, I'm, I'm closing my eyes. Maybe I should just be practicing as I'm teaching. It will help a little bit. I'm closing my eyes and I'm asking the Holy Spirit, what is the Holy Spirit saying right now? What's the Holy Spirit saying right now? And a word that just came to me is abuse. Abuse. And uh, I don't know who that is for. Abuse. Abuse. I don't know who that is for. And so, when you hear abuse like that, you want to kind of um ask the holy spirit what is it that what kind of abuse who is it that being abused and 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 when you are speaking out you verbalize it you understand so if you hear just a word like abuse all you gotta say is um the lord is going to comfort you if you are going through any kind of abuse right now that says the lord he is going to be your strength he's going to guide you is going to help you and in a congregational prophecy you want to be bold about it but when you are speaking to the person privately and i would recommend that private uh, prophecies is how you begin because that's where the person can also 
kind of dial in and get a response from you. You understand that? And so that is really how you grow gradually. So in your small group, that's why I want you to find a small group partner. Find two or three people you want to pray with over the phone and practice on each other. I need you to do that because it's essential that you can hear from God. All right. So you do that and you speak boldly and clearly. And also, um, you also have to stop it when you feel that the Holy Spirit has stopped prompting you on things. Don't keep going, especially those who are operating the gift. When the shot, when the uh, when the cloud lift, just be quiet. From that point, you'll be speaking from your head. When the Holy Spirit prompts you and you are flowing, flow. But when it's time to stop, stop because the Spirit of God probably has stopped talking. All right, and it's also important that you use uh, your normal tone of voice. Normal tone of voice. Don't make it too emotional. You have to grow out of that. And you speak simple language and and stay within the boundaries of edification, exaltation, and comfort. That is really where the Holy Spirit has made his mind to do for his people. And always ask for feedback. So let me finish up our podcast today by giving you the steps to go and prophesy over your children giving you the steps to go prophesy over your sister giving you the steps on how to go prophesy over your brother and if you do that continuously you're going to start flowing in the in the prophetic in the prophetic so beautifully all right so first step practical step you have to stir up your spirit before you prophesy you understand some of you have a song a worship songs that really get you spiritual praying in the spirit can stir you up praising God can stay up so basically you are just making a roll call of your faculties you are just telling your mind your heart your soul and your body that my spirit is about to do something so all of you chill you understand that my spirit is about to engage so all of you chill so when you're about to prophesy the first thing is stir up your spirit and when I hear the word stir up your spirit it, it gets me scared a little bit that means that your spirit has attended your spirit that has just a tendency but your spirit um will stay quiet if you don't engage him amen so stirring up your spirit in praise stirring up your spirit in prayer stirring up your spirit in worship is the first step if you're about the purpose over your children stir up your spirit you said we come on the phone you can call it um uh spiritual uh or if you have two friends or three friends that you are doing this with you can call it maybe our thursday time with the holy spirit when you come on the line the first minute is stirring up your spirit just whatever anything that will stir you up sometimes you hear a prayer you hear somebody ministering and it begins to charge you up that's step number one step number two is now know that all of you on the platform the holy spirit wants to speak to all of you so bad you understand have it at the back of your mind that my faith tells me that god wants to talk to adrena my faith tells me that god wants to talk to michael my faith tells me that god wants to speak to stacy so bad my faith tells me that god wants to speak to a mary guys want to speak to um uh what what, whatever name that you connect to god wants to speak to that person and so you stretch your faith knowing that god wants to speak to the person the third thing you do is now you focus you focus all your attention on what the holy spirit will say so quietly as you are together on the line you worship a, a little bit you have faith a little bit maybe you can even read a scripture or two just stir up the atmosphere until things are charged up and then you you zero in into prophecy time and then one by one you go around what are you picking what are you picking you call the name of the person okay so we want to seek the mind of god for this lady on uh, who say we're going for the first person who is patricia and he says do anybody get anything for patricia anybody get um patricia Wow, I get something for Patricia right now. I'm flowing right. I don't know who Patricia is, but I get something. Somebody is dealing with a, a serious migraine. A serious migraine. I don't know who you are. And uh, may the Lord heal you. And then you're flowing. You're just flowing. This is just a word of knowledge that came to me. But whatever you hear from Patricia, you just flow. And then you ask if she can confirm that she's going through that. And if this becomes what you guys do every week, 
then the devil will not sneak because by the time the devil sneak somebody has picked it up already before the devil start acting crazy you can see if you have a, a friend who is married and one of these days you are asking is god is saying anything about our friend our mother and then before you know somebody says i don't know but i see somebody yelling at mother and let's pray against that and before you know martha is going to have conflict with the husband but you just canceled it you understand that so having the ability to hear from the holy spirit is how you you beat you beat the enemy that way amen so that is how you go about it so let me finish up because of time um you um so you you concentrate listening so basically listen to your spirit it's what you have to do and do and do till you are good at it so you can do it all the time amen and it comes by prayer by fasting and by staying in the spirit avoiding sin avoiding all kinds of funny lifestyle and just being legit and god will flow through you all right and and you step out and share simply what you have received amen and start with what you have been given expressing to receive uh, expecting to receive more as you speak it you understand that and um whatever comes in your mind sometimes because it is not from your mind but from your spirit sometimes you have to listen to yourself talk and god will be telling you more as you flow and then get feedback on us on it also i want to encourage you to set up as time with the holy spirit with your friend with your husband with your children and learn how to hear from god because god will intervene god will help god will seek to bring answers to the situation don't be emotional don't pray emotionally pray according to the spirit and your level of prayer will go higher when you do this you're only going to pray things the holy spirit wants you to pray and you're going to get answers and people wonder why do you always get answers the trick is because you don't pray your prayers you pray what the holy spirit is saying that's the secret to jesus christ he said what i see my father do i do so right away he has removed his personal interest from the table and is going with the interest of the holy spirit and what the holy spirit orders he will pay for it amen let's pray eternal father everlasting king we thank you for what you are doing we are we are listening to you while the world is going crazy we, we don't we don't care we, we we don't care about what the world is saying we are listening to what the holy spirit is saying which is the answer to all problems i pray that your spirit will be activated i pray that you hear from god clearly that you'll be able to walk in wisdom in knowledge and in understanding in jesus mighty name amen